Okay, friends, coming to the next section. Uh, the next section is uh, what are the types of electrical stimulation that are used? What are their effectivity? Where they are used? And how they are defined? And what are the effects of electrotherapy in uh, non neurogenic disorders and in neurological disorders? Right. So, uh, there are three, four types of stimulation that are broadly used. So, the first we call it as the neuromuscular electrical stimulation. That is the stimulation of any part or muscle that is not functional without functional movement. For example, you are putting the stimulation but you do not intend to get the movement. Right? So, this is neuromuscular electrical stimulation with or without functional movement this you have to remember nmes if the part is not responding you are going to give the stimulation uh, on the chronexia and uh, we are not going to uh, give that much intensity that you get the movement if the movement is not possible initially it's okay whenever the movement is possible you can elicit the movement if it is not possible you can leave it to the minimal palpable contraction that you can feel or see in the muscle right then the next is here functional movement that is functional electrical stimulation or functional nerve stimulation. In cases of foot drop or in cases of uh, wrist drop or in cases of uh, uh, gait abnormalities because of certain muscles involved, you can use this stimulation for functional movement gaining. So we are doing this so that we can gain a functional movement. So there are gadgets available uh, which assist the dorsiflexors in foot drop cases, right? So, as soon as the patient uh, strikes his heel on the ground, this gets activated and it sends a stimulus to the PBLS anterior so that it pulls the, uh, the uh, ankle up in dorsiflexion. Right? So, this is a form of uh, functional electrical stimulation that can be seen or functional nerve stimulation that can be seen. The next is uh, therapeutic electrical stimulation. Right? This is strictly sensory stimulation only. This is uh, specifically sensory stimulation of nerve. There is no motor component involved as far as this is. And the fourth is the normal term that we use is electrical stimulation. So electrical stimulation refers to a broad variety of currents that we have already discussed some of them and we are going to discuss many of them now. Right. So it has a broad variety. So this is an unspecific term that is used. So you have to be specific when you are writing your prescription that whether you are going to give the patient the NMES that is grade 0 to grade 1 and grade 2 we are going to go for NMES uh, post that uh, if there is a residual weakness in the muscle we are going to go for functional electrical stimulation if there is selective weakness we are to, going to go for functional electrical stimulation for uh, uh, paresthetikas or uh, paresthesias we are going to go for therapeutic electrical stimulation and for uh, any other thing, for pain or for uh, or for uh, reduction of edema or anything, there we are going to use the electrical stimulation term, right? So these are four forms of stimulation that we use, and it has been classified according to Tim Watson and the twelfth uh, edition of uh, Clayton's, right? So this is according to. Tim Watson, uh, the editor of 12th edition of Clayton's electrotherapy or evidence-based electrotherapy, right? So, you have to remember this. Now, next uh, use of uh, electrical stimulation in neuro nerve related, peripheral nerve related problems. So, there we are going to use it for atrophy, right? So, muscle atrophy, right, because of any reason, it can be disuse atrophy, it can be uh, nerve related atrophy, it can be peripheral nerve injury related atrophy or anything, or a denervated muscle, right. If a joint has gone into uh, stiffness, then also the muscle will not be able to produce movement in the joint because the congruence in the intra-articular surface is not present. This also causes loss of muscle property and muscle mass which is known as atrophy. Right? And if there is an injury related to the peripheral nerve 
then you can call it as a denervated muscle right so this is because of exanatomasis neuropraxia or uh, neurotomasis right any of this can lead to a denervated muscle where also we get a positive response although the evidence to support this clinically is low but the functional output as we see is high so based on this it is effective in these two conditions right now in neurological conditions where all it is effective so it helps in improving motor control it has been proven that it helps in improving the motor control and it helps in improving the strength right so it helps in improving the motor control and it helps in increasing the strength these two are definitely well performed well noted studies there are many studies which show that in post stroke conditions the subluxation of shoulder can be avoided or can be reduced by use of early stimulation of posterior deltoid and the pectoralis minor muscle right so there have been studies which show various muscles that can be activated and used so that it will avoid the drooping of shoulder that can be seen in a stroke patient fine then there are studies that it reduces spasticity now when we talk about spasticity reduction first mechanism is stimulate spastic muscles right when you stimulate the spastic muscles Uh, depending on the neurophysiological law of sherrington a strong contraction is followed by strong relaxation right so if you stimulate the spastic muscle it causes relaxation of the muscle thereby reducing spasticity this is first theory the second theory is stimulation of antagonist right so they say that if you stimulate for example if there is a flexor synergy in in the stroke with a patient with stroke then the flexors are getting spastic and the flexors are getting spastic so you stimulate the extensors and you stimulate the extensors right so this maintains the strength of the extensors and does not allow it to go into contracture right so this is the theory these are the two theories which are under study under trial right yet to be 100% proven but yes they are under trial and they are they have been used regularly so that you can get results out of this right and then there is uh, uh, e even the studies are proving that it is helpful in increasing the functional status in children right so again we have to understand that where all this is effective is number one is peripheral nerve injuries where these are definitely proving effective number 2 is uh, cns related disorders where they are proving effective number 3 uh, uh, is uh, pain inhibition right because of pain a person is not doing movement for example in rheumatoid arthritis case or in arthritis cases the movement is hampered because of pain the patient cannot move the joint and that is leading to uh, weakness so that can also be taken care over here and then uh, there can be your pelvic uh, floor uh, pelvic floor weakness or or uh, incontinence that is related to pelvic floor muscles so stimulation of pelvic floor muscles is also helping people to get recovered and to get better results with the electrical stimulation right and with this this is the summary of where it can be used and what are the types of electrical stimulation that are used now next the last uh, uh, lecture in this series will be the parameters of stimulation that can be used and that are used right and the contraindications that you have to take care right so see you in the next class till then bye bye